Please be seated. So good evening, everyone. Welcome to this wonderful and glorious night where we celebrate the incarnation of our Lord Jesus. I want to say that I'm so pleased to be here because I just love being with all of you all. You all really do my heart well, and I can imagine the people online I'm so thankful for all of you, too. Indeed, I have grown to love Chicago in general, during Christmas especially. Things are so beautiful, huh? I mean, the decorations are spectacular. I just walked out there and saw these green and red trees out there. I mean, it's really something. And the people are jolly and the festive mood fills the air. It's just wonderful. It's a season on top of that of giving. If you watch the news, you know people are giving all over the place. And they notice. They notice the people who have been here all along, and then they give very generously, very generously. I just love it. But I'm going to tell you a little secret there, Chicago, and the people here and the people online as well. Sometimes they go a little far here. I'll tell you about that. So I made the mistake last Thursday of going into Marshalls. Do y'all know about that? The line at Marshall's wrapped around the store. I was like, I will never be able to get to a cashier, much less check out. It's crazy. And so I was like, I couldn't do it. It was too many people, too much chaos, and so I ran out of the store. Just ran, gasping for air when I got out. Indeed, I know that people take this time of year really seriously, but I couldn't be with them. I had to give it up. And so, it's not just in the stores. Who has turned on their TV and watched the news? Y'all can answer me, you know, I can see you. <laughs> I tell you, the news is really kind of grim these days, what with the violence and the war and the poverty and the injustice, it just messes up our festive mood. And might I also say that I have a little saying which captures this time. It's called having a curé day. I have curé days. How many of y'all know what a curé is? It, Y'all know, I'll tell you, I'll show you, okay. So, a Kyrie is a prayer that's normally said in our tradition during worship. It can be recited or sung corporately. And in Latin, it is Kyrie eleison. Okay, how many know now? So, a few more, a few more. How about, Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. Y'all know that? Yeah, I see everyone, uh -huh, uh huh, okay, got it, Paula. Well, I say that there are certain days that are Kyrie days where all you're saying is, Lord have mercy. It's really hard. So there's a juxtaposition, right? We have the whole notion of darkness and difficulties that we see, not just in the stores, but on the news and elsewhere. And then we have this wonderful holy night. Look at all these beautiful poinsettias and everything. I mean, it's gorgeous, right? But that's a just a position. On the one hand, we have the reality of what we're dealing with on a daily basis. And on the other side, we have this wonderful, holy night, so well decorated and everything, but we're still dealing with the difficulty of the time, huh? 
but I want to tell you something about all that. Despite the dreariness that some people feel, and that's legitimate, it really is, you and me are Christmas. Christmas is found in each of us. And so let me unpack it a little bit using the gospel reading that Stephen just gave us, which was beautiful, as our example. A gospel is from John, and John tells us that Jesus was always. What does that mean? That poetry in John can get us tripped up. But let me tell you that Jesus was not just coming on the scene at the Incarnation, Jesus was here from the very beginning of time. And so the lesson says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the world was God. Truly, Jesus is God, and Jesus always was with us. In a wonderful Trinitarian tradition, we acknowledge that Jesus was always with us, and that Jesus is God. And so this scripture goes on to say that Jesus brings us what? Life. All of us have life because Jesus created us to have life. And Jesus is our life, and not only that, but our light. And so light in this text, equates with goodness. So if light is present, we are alive and it's good. So far, so good, right? But the scripture also says that Jesus entered into a world and the world did not know him. Not so good on that score. See, evil enters in and grief and despair, which are captured here as darkness. However, we're also told that the darkness could not be overcome. Indeed, the darkness was overcome by the light. There is light and there is goodness despite the darkness that sometimes we feel and sometimes we see. Moreover, people who believe in God and follow God and are beloved of God. According to our scripture, it says, all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God. So Jesus, in other words, gives us power. That sleeping baby in the manger gives us power. And that sleeping baby lived among us and taught us things that we now aspire to emulate. Indeed, I was awestruck, really, when I went to the Holy Land and I was thinking, I am walking the streets that Jesus walked. And I'm dipping my toe, I was careful to see, I was dipping my toe in the Jordan or riding in a boat on the Sea of Galilee where Jesus was. See, I thought, how incredible. I have been where God has been. So whether or not you indeed have been to the Holy Land, you are here in the world. And because of that, where Jesus was, and you have walked in the very shoes of God. Indeed, see, Jesus was not just here to chill, folks. He had something to do. He was able to teach us how to live. He left us with many lessons and the awesome ability to affect change and change lives to the positive. So we are the light and friends, we are the change. We 
of Christmas because Jesus has shown us how to live in that juxtaposition of living with light, even in the midst of darkness. So where then is the light and all the positivity of Christmas when the decorations go down and the tree is thrown out or put away? What then do we do when jolliness and sheer seem remote or the darkness of life seems overwhelming? You know, although we're asked to be jolly during this time, you and I both know it's a time of sadness and introspection for some people. What do we do then? Friends, God loves us no matter what is going on in our lives. Indeed, God meets us wherever we are at this time of year, and God chooses to walk in our shoes no matter where we are. And so therefore, we're able to have Christmas reside in us no matter what's happening. Remember, we are Christmas. See, Christmas is the light that overcomes darkness in life. Yes, indeed, we live with despair, and I need not explain to you what that is. You all, all are dealing with your own things. I know you know about it. But Jesus taught us certain kinds of ways in life. And in that life, we're able to overcome darkness. In spite of the drudgery of life, we, my friends, have hope. We have compassion and care and acceptance. And what else? Unequivocal love. As our diocesan motto says, we lead with love and friends that's countercultural to what is about in the world in the way of darkness. Our light is countercultural. And so we get that and go forward despite the darkness. So, what should we do, dear friends? We recognize that we are Christmas and we bring the love that we have inside of us out all year long. The light we carry inside us tonight is the light we have all the time. We always carry it, and the darkness cannot overcome it. The great theologian, also my great theologian, Howard Thurman said in his in his great poem called The Mood of Christmas, he said it differently, but it's still the same thing. Listen. When the shepherds are back with their flocks, the work of Christmas begins. Indeed, to find the lost, to heal the broken, to feed the hungry, to release the prisoner, to rebuild the nations, to bring peace to people, to make music in the heart, and I would add, to love, to love, to love. Indeed, that's what Christmas is all about. And as followers of Christ, Christmas lives in all of us. Now, I spent all of Advent going inside myself and thinking about what my life might be like, making Advent resolutions, because that's New Year's for, lo for all of us Christians. How many of y'all did Advent this morning and here you are for Christmas? I'm not by myself, am I? Oh yeah, I see a few of you, yes. It was Advent 4 earlier, and now here we are at Christmas. 
But it's also the new year for us Christians. Advent was the new year. Now, maybe you had a chance to think about things too and become introspective during Advent. But even if you didn't, you have a chance now. As Jesus has taught us throughout all of his lessons, I couldn't keep up with all those lessons. And so you know what I did? I got a cheat sheet. See? And guess what? Because I love you so, I got you a cheat sheet too. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. Indeed. I think that we all can resolve to make some changes in our lives and bring more light into our individual worlds. So friends, at the uh, website LessonsLearnedInLife.com, they created this sheet and I stole it. And I'm gonna share it with you so that we can take some ideas off of that, um, that sheet and incorporate them into our own lives to bring in more light. It is indeed, y'all will notice, you probably can't see it now, but it's in the shape of a Christmas tree. And so, I invite each of you at the end of our service to see the ushers who have copies of my cheat sheet, okay? Ask them for one. And so you will be able to look at it and kind of in the privacy of your own homes, circle the things that might speak to you and then incorporate them into your life. Indeed, this cheat sheet is for you and you only. Now you might not find it helpful, no problem. Don't worry about it, the trash can will take it. But if it's useful, take it home, take a look. It was useful for me, and I garnered a few ideas from it. For indeed, I'm Christmas, and you all carry Christmas with you. And so incorporating a few ideas may help us get through life a little easier. So I'm going to read to you what it says, and then you all can go into more depth after the service is over, okay? All right then. It says, this Christmas end a quarrel. Seek out a forgotten friend. I bet we have some, huh? Dismiss suspicion and replace it with trust. Write a love letter. Share some treasure. Give a soft answer. Keep a promise. Find the time. Boy, are we in trouble there. We never have time. Forgo a grudge. Forgive an enemy. Listen. Indeed, apologize when you're wrong. Try to understand. Examine your demands on others. Think first of someone else. Be kind. Be gentle. Appreciate. Laugh a little. Laugh a little more. Indeed, express your gratitude. Gladden the heart of a child. Welcome a stranger. Take the pleasure and the beauty of the wonder of the earth. Speak your love. Speak it again. Speak it yet once again. Amen. <laughs>